welcome to the University of Law's Future Pupils podcast. I'm Evie and I'm a future pupil at Foundry Chambers, which is a criminal set. And I'm here with Quinette. Hi guys, I'm Quinette and I'm a future pupil at Five Pump Court and I'll be undertaking a family pupilet. Welcome Quinette. Um, so today we're going to be talking to you guys about mini pupillages and we'll also touch on marshalling, that lovely mysterious experience that some people seem to be getting on their CVs. Um, so first of all, just to cover what a mini pupillage is for anyone that doesn't know, a mini pupillage is very similar to a VAC scheme in terms of the stilidity route. So you'll spend about two to five days with a barrister's chambers, interacting with their barristers, you'll probably go to court, you'll maybe do a bit of informal written work, but nothing too scary. And the objective is for you to see the profession and to immerse yourself in the bar. It's not to pressurize you, they won't make it unpleasant in any way, it's just for you to get some ex- direct experience with barristers. So that's all the mini pupillages. And then marshalling is very similar, but instead of being with the chambers, you will be with a judge. So you'll see court and see sort of the bar from the judge's perspective rather than the barristers. So Quinette, in terms of applying for your minis, how many sets did you apply to? How did you pick them? Um, so, I mean, I had an interesting way of getting my minis, but I knew that I wanted to have experience at family sets only. So I picked the family only sets. Um, So I think the first one, my university were offering it a family only pupillage, but you had to apply. So I did an application through my careers at university. Um, And then the second one, it was through networking, actually. It was a mentorship scheme um, where I got paired up with a family barrister and he um, offered me mini pupillage. So I didn't really have the traditional route of applying to um, applying for mini pupillages, but I still did some form of application. It was just not the usual route. And then by contrast, myself, I applied for my mini pupillages down what would some would say the traditional route, I guess, which is going to the Chamber's website, finding the mini pupillage page and then putting in an application. In terms of picking my chambers when I was making those applications, I did a year abroad at university. My degree I found very intense. I needed a break, so decided to take myself off to Southeast Asia for a year. And I spent a bit of that year getting myself together in terms of, right, I needed some mini pupillages. I was going to do all my applications whilst I was abroad and get them all lined up for final year coming back to the UK. Um, And I basically used the Legal 500 and the Chambers and Partners websites, which sort of list the best chambers for each practice area by location. I then did some research into the sets. So I put in London and crime because that's what I wanted to do. And then I found the list and then I looked at all the chambers websites and applied to the ones I liked the look of um, and the ones I was interested in and applying to for pupillage. In terms of the application process itself, all of my sets were the same. You have to put in a CV and a cover letter I would always advise if you are putting in a CV for any kind of experience at the bar, never make it longer than two pages. Make it as concise and relevant to the position you're applying to as possible. Don't be using loads of different colours and formatting and a picture of yourself. That's not really what they're looking for at the bar in terms of a CV. That's a very different kind of CV. So standard CV, I would back every time. And then with a cover letter never more than one page, three paragraphs. First paragraph, why you want to be a barrister. Second paragraph, why you'd be a good barrister. Third paragraph, why you're applying for a mini pupillage at the chambers you're applying to. Um, And that formula worked well for me. I used it um, for every set I applied to. And then made sure I chased up any applications where I didn't hear back. And eventually I had a good selection of chambers that I then went to do a mini app. But the key also to remember, especially I'd say with crime mini pupillages, is because there isn't um, really effective HR departments in these chambers managing the mini pupillage process. It usually boils down to a poor junior who's already stressed about applications and their cases and their caseload and their business and their practice. 
um, many pupillages are quite far down on their list of priorities. And that can work well for you if you accept that and you realize that if you chase up your applications, that may pay off. And also sending off as many applications as possible so that at least one lands in the inbox of that junior at the right time when they're having a little break or they're on their commute home. They check their inbox, see your application, see that you're good and offer you a mini. So a lot of it's down to look and the timing of your application. So I always say send off as many applications to the chambers that you're interested in as possible. Um, Quinette, so you did family mini pupillages. Yep. Um, did you decide to do any in any other areas? And if so, why? And if not, why not? No, it was just purely family because that's where I know that I wanted to go. So yeah, no. Yeah, I was the same. I only did criminal ones because I was quite set on doing crime. Um, so Quinette, you've mentioned that you did too many pupillages. Um, I do think it's quite important to address right now how many mini pupillages you should feel you need to do. Um, the answer to this is one will be enough, actually. It's not the same as it used to be in terms of getting more mini pupillages meant you're a better candidate. Would you agree, Quinn? Yes, no, 100%. Um, and most sets will tell you, actually, that whilst it's good that you've got all of these mini pupillages, it doesn't actually show us that you've got the real life experience of doing advocacy or of the area, because really in mini pupillages, you're just, you're observing, you don't get to do anything you don't get to say anything you're just not seen sorry you're seen you're not heard um so yeah no I agree with you one is usually enough yeah I think what you have to remember with mini pupillages is the value in it is in terms of you being exposed to the bar so do however many you want to do that personally for you allows you feel you've seen enough of the bar and of the practice area you're interested in to make an informed choice and be able to communicate why you want to be a barrister to chambers when you do pupillage. That's the aim. It's not a case of I must have six mini pupillages to be a good candidate. Chambers just don't look at mini pupillages in that way. They just see it as you put the effort in to expose yourself to the bar and you know what you're talking about when you say I'm a good barrister. So, Quinette, on your family mini pupillages, do you want to explain sort of what you did? What did you see? Um, so, um, the sets that I were at were just purely family. Um, so, it was mainly just going to court and seeing um, the applications. Although, one of the mini pupillages, I was able to sit in and a conference between the barrister and the client. I think the client was actually an international client. Um, so, it was more of a telephone conference, but it was really good to sit in and hear um, conversations between the barrister and their client before the hearing. I was able to sit in some mediations between the client and the opponent party and the barristers themselves which was um really really interesting as well um there's not much prep you had to what well, I had to do for my mini pupillage because obviously you're just observing a barrister um they don't tell you to do research although it's probably helpful to do research in the area of law so you understand what's being said um and I was able to go to court with them uh sit in the hearing hear them speak to the clients um both both pre and post hearing and that was it they sent me on my way home after the court hearing um it's quite it's quite you know straight to the point um it's either that you meet them at court or maybe you meet them at the uh chambers but it's usually meet them at the court um once the case is done um <laughs> we're done for the day and it, it finishes quite early so it's really just to give you an exposure of what your life will be like as a barrister rather than actually really grasping advocacy in my opinion anyway um grasping advocacy and you know the other intrinsic stuff that comes with it yeah similar for me um at my criminal mini pupillages it was broadly the same experiences at all of them so I got to see courtroom trials that was really cool um I got to expose myself to both the prosecution and defense and I think that's quite useful if you want to be a criminal barrister 
I also think what was really useful is I did get to spend some time with pupils in the magistrate's court, which is important experience in the sense of when you start a criminal pupillage, you spend most of the time with senior barristers in the Crown Court. And then when you start practicing in your second six, you're thrown in the magistrate's court kind of in the dark. So I think if you can see what the magistrate's court is all about on minis, you know what you're you're getting yourself into in like that first six months of practicing on your feet. Um, I'd also yeah see a lot of clients I got to see some fun things happen in court sometimes some chaotic scenes Um, got to see yeah client conferences sentencing hearings got to go into the cells that was really cool Um, some of the chambers invited me back to look grand chambers so that was quite fun too Um, and I did think sort of the mini pupillages really solidified for me that the criminal bar was right for me. I really enjoyed traveling around the country and around London, going to cases. I found it quite exciting. I liked the chaoticness of court. It's chaotic, that's a word. I don't know. But I liked that chaotic vibe that you get in court. And it, for me, it really felt like the criminal bar was for me. So I thought that that was valuable. Um, so, of course, me and Quinnett are criminal and family practitioners or aspiring practitioners or future practitioners. Um, so in terms of other areas of law, we can touch on this briefly in terms of it will be very similar. You'll probably um, spend some time in chambers if you are interested in commercial and chancery bar. Maybe you'll see a case, but most likely you'll be assisting barristers with their written work or their case preparation. Maybe they'll ask you to do a written exercise. Um, and then if it's at the employed bar, maybe you'll get to go to an employment tribunal with a barrister and see that. So it's broadly very similar across the bar in terms of you'll be there observing what the barristers in your practice area do on the day to day. It is also important to be aware that some minis are assessed. This is most common at the commercial bar, isn't it? Yeah. Um, with that, try not to be too nervous about that whole assessed element. Just go in with the same mindset as any other mini pupillage that this is your opportunity to learn about the bar. Um, don't stress too much about what chambers are assessing you on or anything like that. Um, so Quinette, in terms of preparing for your mini pupillage on the day, on the morning, what did you wear? What did you think? How did you get ready for it? Um, so firstly, I dress like a barrister, so I wore smart clothes, um, smart shoes included, um, made sure I looked presentable because you were actually going to court and you were going to be in front of um, a client, a real life client. It's not acting. So yeah, looked the part. Um, what else did I get there really early? Um, you know, if they tell you nine, try and get there for like 8.30 um, because they will not be happy with you. I mean, I'll tell you my experience. I um, I got to court on time, but it just wasn't the time she really wanted me there for. And even though she told me that time, but anyway, um, yeah, I got a bit of a telling off, which was worth it because <laughs> it's all part of the learning process and, you know, it's all part of the job. But um, yeah, get there early. Um, don't say anything unless you're told to say anything. Yeah, um, especially if, in client conference. Yeah, right? especially yeah. in client conference. Just you're just there to be yeah. seen, not that. Um, and even if the client tries to speak to you in a friendly way, just say, you know, your barrister would be able to answer your questions because you can't answer questions and you can't give them advice. Um, always be polite. Um, follow your barrister around. Like if they go out the room, unless they say maybe they're excusing themselves to the bathroom, follow them around because that's also part of learning as well. You get to um, see how they speak to the other side's counsel, um, which is really, really helpful as well. Um, what else? Yeah, I echo everything you've said, Quinnette. I think also try not to be too nervous. I was really nervous before my first mini um, and then thank goodness um, at my first mini, I was paired with a pupil and they were as nervous as me because they were just starting out on their feet. So it was a really nice sort of joint nervousness. Um, and then after that, I realized, you know, most of the barristers are actually quite lonely. They're often very sociable people, but they're practicing self-employed. They're on their own most of the time. And so they'll really appreciate just having company. Um, and once you get that in your head, you'll be far more reassured that you're wanted. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and also with that, don't be put off or offended if the barrister isn't particularly chatty. Just appreciate they may be really stressed. You know, if they're a young barrister, it may be one of their first cases. And so let them come to you. Just be company for them. Pleasant company. Um, check in with them, see how they are. But sort of match their energy levels in terms of questions if they seem really chatty ask away if they seem quite withdrawn and quiet maybe just give them the space they need to prep and things like that Um, Um, and I'd also say take something to make notes on because they might actually want you to make notes for them whether that be your laptop a tablet or a notebook um actually try and look like you're prepared um for um the the mini pupillage um also phones be yeah, really I was careful just about to say with that. your phone yeah, yeah turn your phone off turn it off in court don't be on it all the time don't have sort of snapchat going and tiktok going whilst you're with the barrister just try and be as professional as possible mm-hmm. um I, oh, sorry i was gonna say also um it's probably best you have like maybe your tea or coffee or your breakfast way before like don't get yes, there and start definitely. pulling out snacks yeah, yeah, yeah. they're trying to you know prepare for the hearing or yeah. it's during conferencing so also i'm not sure how well equipped the family courts are with snacks but criminal courts are terrible take your lunch with you um some of the courts are not even in towns or in areas with a shop so you will starve to death if you don't have snacks um so take your lunch with you basically um Right. So, Quinette, in terms of the sort of if the barristers did seem to be quite chatty and receptive to a good chit chat, some questions, what sort of questions do you think um, students should be asking on mini pupillages? Um, well, I think questions that are obviously beneficial to you. And I mean, why why are you doing the mini pupillage? What are you trying to see? Um, so I definitely ask questions of, you know, what do you like about the job? What's the challenging part of the, of the job? Um, depending of what um, end of seniority they're at, um, what do they struggle as a junior barrister? What do they struggle with now as, if they're senior? Um, you know, how do they balance everything? Because obviously, like you said, they're actually a bit lonely. They don't work with anyone. Um, I was more intrigued of how they keep up to date with things because, I mean, you're, you're basically self-employed. It's different to a solicitor where your firm has to ensure you're up to date with your training and your um I think CPD um whereas you're responsible for that so how do you do that how do you take time out how long do you li- how long do you leave to prep for your case I mean that was what I was really interested in how long do you leave to prep for your case how do you prep for your case so you've got your case papers what's the first thing you do um how do you start to bring everything together how do you know the points that you're going to you know, point out all the things that aren't as relevant. Um, So I was just honestly trying to absorb as much as I can from how they do their day to day from when they've given the case papers to when the case ends. Um, So definitely ask questions that would help you and shape you um, to being the barrister that you want to be or to help you decide whether that's the route you want to go down. Um, I also actually asked, how do you keep a social life? Um, I think that's really important to ask them as well. Um, So yeah, those are the questions I asked. What about you? Yeah, I agree with all of those all fantastic questions. Um, I also think it's important to think about questions in two different ways. So first of all, make sure you're asking the questions relevant to you. So maybe a bit about your current experiences, what sort of experiences might be useful for you personally to get to get a pupillage at their chambers or maybe what sort of skills the chambers is looking for, but also questions from their perspective. So maybe what they thought were the experiences that led to them getting pupillage or the things, yeah, that they found challenging about the career, about getting pupillage and really learn from their experiences. Um, I also think it's really important for you to bear in mind that you are speaking to individuals. So whilst chambers have groups of barristers, the barristers are all individualistic with very different personalities and perspectives and experiences and practices and therefore take the advice from the barristers with a pinch of salt in terms of they're not all going to be the same as you. They're not all going to have the same wants and needs and personalities. So if you're, for instance, a lot of time on criminal mini pupillages, I'd be told by quite senior barristers, don't come to crime. Um, but then if you actually think about when they decided to go into crime, it's probably when 
it was more of a money decision rather than that was the practice area for them. And so obviously I had to take that advice with a pinch of salt. But then when I spoke to juniors at the criminal bar who were really excited about the career, they were really enjoying it. They'd built their practice in a way that worked with them, worked with their skills and their ambition and what they wanted to get out of the role. They they really liked it. So it's making sure you're taking the advice on board from people that are in a position you want to be in and accepting that all advice is valuable not all of it will be applicable to you in such a direct way. So make sure you're tapering it with your own wants and needs. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, So Quinette, um, how would you say that mini pupillages help pupillage applications and how should students be writing about their minis and applications? Um, It's really important that you actually describe what you saw and what you found interesting um, rather than just stating that you did a mini pupillage because loads of people can do mini pupillages but what exactly did you observe from it Um, such as I observed a client conference call I was sat in this hearing and also saying what hearing you were sat in so if it's a pre-trial hearing I was sat in a pre-trial hearing and observed this and observed the dynamics of the court if you're sat in uh, I don't know a children acts application um, I was sat in this hearing really give details of what you observed and what you saw and you can even add what you found interesting Um, you know I found it interesting so I think on one of my applications I put um, sorry, one of the mini pupillages I did, I said that I found it interesting that um, the court could make an order sending all five children to a country that they'd never lived before. Um, so it's really showing that you just weren't there following the barrister around, but you actually were attentive to what was going on in the court hearing. You were understanding of the dynamic of the hearing or trial that you're at um and this is what you found interesting so it does show a little bit of analysis if you know as we said a mini pupillage isn't necessarily a huge criteria as to whether you get pupillage or not um but it it does show that you're able to um observe and be analytical of what's going on when you're observing something even though you may not necessarily be involved in it Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, Make sure you're writing about what you learn on your minis, what you find interesting on your minis, and that you're writing it in a way that shows that you've exposed yourself to the bar and what you've enjoyed about that and what you think is right for you. Mini pupillages is all about showing motivation and commitment to the bar. So what about your mini pupillages motivated you? And how have you shown commitment by undertaking those minis and taking away those experiences? And also remembering who you observed is yes. important. Yeah. Um, because like you said, there's different barristers and everyone's individual. Um, so it's it's good to show that you were actually paying attention and you knew who you were you were with. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of top tips from me in terms of when you're writing about them in your application. If you've got a long list of minis, be careful with how many you put down on your application or at least keep some of them very, very brief and then flesh out some of the others. But whatever you do, don't have a really long list of mini pupillages that are all saying the same thing in your application. Never repeat things in your application. Make sure each mini, if you're including it, you're including it for a purpose, be it it offered you a different aspect of life at the bar or you, you, sh- you were shown something new or you received a different experience or a different insight, but make sure you're writing about them in a purposeful way and not clogging up your application with them. Um, and also, If you are applying to a chamber that you've done a mini pupillage at, make sure using common sense that you're showing that you like the chambers by taking that experience into account. Okay, it's going to look not quite right if your dream set is garden court. You did a mini at garden court, but your biggest sort of description of a mini pupillage and how much you enjoyed your minis is at a different set. Okay, so make sure that you are using common sense with this. And if you've done a mini pupillage at a set you're applying to for pupillage, you're really showing that set. What about the mini has motivated you to apply to the set? Because it should have done. You yeah. wouldn't be applying to the set if you didn't have a good time on a mini pupillage. So. Um, and then what about in interviews, Quinette? Did you ever have any questions about your minis and in interviews? I didn't, but I think that's, it goes back to what you were saying about how they're not, I mean, yes, it's great to see that you've taken some steps to show your motivation to the bar, but no, I didn't have any questions on mini people. It was just, no. 
So yeah, questions in uh, pupillage interviews about mini pupillages um, will be very similar to sort of how you should approach it in an application. So it's just making sure you're really drawing from those experiences, what you've learned and why that makes you either want to be a barrister or will make you a better barrister. Um, always talk about them in a purposeful way. And just remember as well to make those answers personal to you. So what about the mini pupillages? What stories can you extract from those mini pupillages that are interesting, that's going to interest the barristers, it's going to show a bit more about you and your personality. Um, and then you can't go wrong with approaching it like that. Um, so Quinette, did you ever do any marshalling? I did. I did one. Um, and that was in the family court. Um, I don't think there's a direct way to apply for marshalling. Um, how I got mine was through a moot, actually. I didn't moot. I observed the moot. And, uh, but the judge was talking about her experiences of her coming to the um, family bar. And so I just went up to her and I we just got talking and then she offered me marshalling with her. And it's really weird because it started off with three days and I think I was there for like 10 days. Um, but yeah, Marshalling was really great from a judge's perspective. Marshalling is very similar to being a mini people, but you get to speak to the judge and have discussions with them about the case. And um, I think it's more analytical from the judge's perspective and how they get to their judgment. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I also only did one marshalling placement and um, I received that experience through networking, not because of any formal application process. Um, and yeah, it was really interesting to see just how judges sort of analyse the advocacy of the barristers, maybe what things they find helpful and not in terms of compiling bundles and case papers. And it's just interesting to see that often judges can, from an outside perspective, seem quite either harsh or difficult. But then when you sort of see their thought process behind closed doors, how much under pressure they are in terms of time to make very difficult decisions, it does sort of broaden your perspective and you can kind of see why we need to do things in court the way we do. Um, but I do think it's important to take away from what me and Queen have said, that marshalling experiences often come by intermingling with the judges offering them that it's very difficult to apply for them in sort of a formal process and they are by no means essential so do not feel like you need to get one they're difficult to get it's very difficult to find out how to get one um, and it's all based on luck really and more who you know rather than anything merit-based so never ever feel like you have to get an experience in marshalling but if you can get one they are quite a useful experience so but it's again the same with minis make sure you're extracting from the experience what you're learning and what you're interested in don't just describe what you've seen in a very sort of base superficial way yeah any other hints and tips for our aspiring mini pupils Quinette? Really know what you want to get from the minis. What do you want to see? Um, you know, what really, what would really confirm to you that this is the route that you want to go down? Um, do research of who you'll be following, which barrister you'll be with, because then you're really able to understand the practice, the practice that they're in. Obviously, um, for family law, it could be someone that is that specialises in divorce or matrimonial finances, and you're really able to understand what they do, and you can actually ask questions on that area. Whereas if you just go as if you're going for uh, a work experience without knowing what you're going for, for for, you may not get what you really want from it, and it may not even confirm whether this is the route you want to go down. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think prepare yourself, look good, look smart, uh, be on time. Be polite. Don't speak. <laughs> and less spoken. And less spoken to. Turn off your phones. Um, go with a notepad, some sort of device, because they might just actually ask you to take notes. Um, if you take notes before you send it or give it to them, check through it. Make sure that it makes sense to you and to them. And it's something that they can read. Um, I'm not really sure about you, Evie, but um, they always paid for our lunches. So not saying don't go with lunch, go with lunch. But then if they do offer to pay for your lunch, um, yeah, don't say no. Yeah, they'll at least probably buy you a coffee. Obviously, yeah. with the criminal courtrooms, there was nowhere they could buy us lunch. But if there was, I'm sure they would have been nice enough yeah. to. But yeah, make sure you're taking enough snacks because also 
courts can be cold and that can make mm-hmm. you hangry and all of that stuff. Um, I echo everything, all of your tips. I also think make sure you're going in looking like you want to be there, particularly if you've gone for the strategy of, I'm going to say maybe do an employment mini pupillage, but I want to be a commercial practitioner, but I just want to check that employment isn't right for me instead. So even if it's not sort of your sole ambition and you're doing the mini to just check that area is not right for you, make sure you look like you want to be there, make sure you're interested and positive and you're sort of adding to the barristers experience in court that day you're not making it more difficult for them to do an otherwise already difficult job so yeah. just make the experience pleasant for them and I think also try and if you can add this to your add the people to your network definitely people. go on that LinkedIn go, go on stalk. That LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, usually some of them are really friendly and they're like you've got my email you've got my number if you, I mean don't don't bombard them with messages and emails yes, definitely and, because they will ignore you yeah, yeah, yeah. um but you know just have them in your bank of network because you never know when they could become helpful um when i did my um mini with the barrister that told me off uh she actually became <laughs> like the best person in my corner she read through yeah. my scholarship applications um and she gave me really really good advice um after so make a really good impression because you never know how they can help you afterwards um and yeah don't bombard them if they give you if they say you know you're able to contact contact me when you want or if you need help um be sensible with it and be considerate because they're busy and nobody wants an annoying person emailing them like 10 times a day saying oh my goodness no yeah yeah Yeah, just to touch on that if you ever do want to send something to a barrister maybe it's an application or you need like a mock interview or anything like that make that process for them saying yes to you as easy as possible so send one message with your entire query in there very politely you know we met here, I I really like this about your practice or I think you're inspiring because of this. And then say, you know, I'm struggling with this. I'd really appreciate your time. Attach what you want them to look at to the same message. Um, And then hopefully they'll say yes and they'll be able to in sort of one click look at your application and give you advice don't make it really painful for them to agree to anything because they just won't because they won't have time so make it very polite very efficient for them to help you and you'll be fine so that's everything on mini pupillages today um thank you quinette for all of your insights um and we look forward to seeing you again on our next podcast